Welcome to today's podcast of Places, People, Purpose. Today we are continuing to explore the South Rim of the Grand Canyon. Before jumping into today's episode, we'd like to recommend a wonderful and comprehensive resource that was used both during our trip to the canyon and in writing these podcasts. And that is the book titled Grand Canyon, The Complete Guide by James Kaiser. It's just a great book on the canyon, and we would highly recommend it to anyone who is either going to visit the Grand Canyon or would just like to know more about this mesmerizing and special place. If you'd like to purchase a copy of this book, we have it on the Our Favorites page of our website, placespeoplepurpose.com. Let's start in today talking about a few more of the buildings located at the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Just west of Bright Angel Lodge, there is a small stone building on the edge of the canyon called Lookout Studio. Lookout Studio was designed by Mary Coulter, and she incorporated many of the architectural techniques of the indigenous tribes, such as stone walls, flat roofs, and timber supports into her design. After it was built, Lookout Studio became famous for its incredible sweeping views. The Kolb Studio, also located on the edge of the canyon, is currently home to an art studio that has changing exhibits. For over 70 years, the Kolb Studio was the home of Emery Kolb, one of the earliest and most famous photographers of the Grand Canyon. Emery and his brother Ellsworth arrived at the Grand Canyon in 1902. They set up a photography studio and tourist photographs paid their bills, but their real passion was exploring the Grand Canyon and capturing their exploits on film. In 1911, the brothers had the first successful run of the Colorado River since the one-armed college professor, John Wesley Powell, in 1869. They filmed their journey and made the first ever movie of a Grand Canyon River trip. The film played continuously at the Kolb studio until Emery's death in 1976. Hermit's Rest sits at the end of Hermit Road and its main attraction is a stone building with a giant fireplace. Hermit's Rest was built by the Santa Fe Railroad in 1914 and was also designed by none other than Mary Coulter. In addition to the main building, she also designed a limestone arch with an authentic mission bell from New Mexico. Today, drinks, snacks, and gifts are offered inside. The Desert View Watchtower is considered Mary Coulter's masterpiece in the Grand Canyon. Coulter spent six months researching and planning the tower, which was constructed in 1932. The frame is made of steel, but stone, plaster, and wood give it a rustic, weathered look. At 70 feet tall, it dwarfs any archaeological tower in the southwest but Coulter wanted to achieve stunning views from a tall building that blended into the landscape. This challenge seemed insurmountable until Coulter realized that she could accomplish this objective using a kiva in her design. As a result, visitors enter the watchtower through the kiva room. In Puebloan culture, Kivas are ceremonial chambers used for religious and political gatherings. In actual kivas, smoke from the central fire pit is supposed to purify those who ascend the ladder above. From the kiva room, a series of narrow stairways lead to circular viewing platforms. Paintings by a Hopi artist depict gods and legends on the first platform, 
Upper levels contain replicas of native Southwestern art. On the top floor, there are large picture windows that reveal breathtaking 360 degree views. Phantom Ranch is located near the Colorado at the bottom of the canyon. It offers the only overnight lodging experience available below the canyon rim. There are 11 rustic cabins and two dormitories scattered along Bright Angel Creek. A central dining hall serves home-cooked meals, and there are showers and flush toilets, which are a welcome luxury for any camper. If you are a hiker and want to stay at Phantom Ranch, you need to try for a reservation by means of an online lottery that opens 15 months in advance. More information can be obtained by visiting the website grandcanyonlodges.com. Another way would be to sign up for an overnight mule ride with either one or two nights of lodging. Either way, a stay at the lodge would no doubt be a highlight of any trip to the Grand Canyon. For those visitors seeking an immersive experience into the canyon, the South Rim offers a range of hiking trails catering to various skill levels. The Rim Trail is a relatively easy path that meanders along the rim, providing accessible views of the canyon. More adventurous hikers can explore trails like the Bright Angel Trail or the South Kaibab Trail, which descend into the canyon itself, offering a different perspective of its beauty. The Bright Angel Trail is the Grand Canyon's most popular inner canyon hike. Although steep and challenging, it's well-maintained and easy to follow. Because it starts near the Grand Canyon Village, its upper areas are crowded. So if you want to avoid the crowds, you should try the South Kaibab Trail or the Hermit Trail, which have similar hikes with less crowds. The most popular hikes on the Bright Angel Trail are the 1.5 mile and 3 mile rest house hikes, which take approximately two to four hours and four to six hours respectively to complete. The Bright Angel Trail starts next to the Kolb Studio. If you want to hike the entire trail, it is a strenuous 15.6 mile round trip hike with an elevation change of almost 4,300 feet. The South Kaibab Trail is steep and strenuous and the most direct route to the bottom of the canyon. The South Kaibab Trail ends at the Kaibab Suspension Bridge, which crosses the Colorado River. If you are planning to stay overnight at Bright Angel Campground or Phantom Ranch, you have the option of hiking down the South Kaibab Trail and then returning via the Bright Angel Trail, which is longer but less steep. The South Kaibab Trail starts near Yaki Point, and there are shuttles to the trailhead that depart from the Grand Canyon Visitor Center. To enhance your understanding of the park's natural and cultural history, consider participating in the ranger-led programs available throughout the year. These educational programs cover topics such as geology, wildlife, and the indigenous people's history in the area. The South Rim is also teeming with diverse wildlife and flora, making it an excellent destination for nature enthusiasts. Visitors may spot mule deer, California condors, elk, and a variety of smaller mammals and birds. We saw numerous elk and a bald eagle during our visit, which was like icing on the cake to a beautiful trip. The Grand Canyon's unique ecosystem also supports a wide range of plant life, from cacti and desert shrubs to towering ponderosa pines. The south rim of the Grand Canyon is a testament to the Earth's ancient history and natural beauty. Its accessibility, remarkable viewpoints, and rich cultural history make it a must-visit destination for travelers from around the world. Whether you're a hiker, a photographer, a nature lover, 
or someone seeking a deeper understanding of our planet's geological past, the south rim of the Grand Canyon promises an unforgettable experience that will leave you in awe of the Earth's magnificent wonders. That's all we have for today. Join us tomorrow when we continue our exploration and discovery of the amazing natural wonder that is the Grand Canyon. We look forward to having you with us for our next episode of Places, People, Purpose, where we create connections to our world.